There are aliens like E.T., and then there are aliens like the Xenomorphs, and the bug from Men in Black. You see, the stark difference between those two kinds of aliens arises in the way they treat humans. Much like Xenomorphs use humans as hosts, the bug from Men in Black also does the same. But instead of using the human body simply as an incubator to spawn their young ones, the bug drains everything a human has under their skin and uses the cold, dead skin as the perfect camouflage. Despite the inherent limitations of maneuvering a human vessel, by an entity unfamiliar with its intricacies, the alien bug manages to effectively masquerade as Edgar, the farmer. While the bug's behavior may raise some eyebrows among those keen on observing the peculiarities of the Edgar suit, few individuals suspect the true nature of the bug until it reveals itself at a critical juncture. But what is the true nature of the bug? Where does it come from? What's its interior structure like? And what can its body parts do? Do they all look like cockroaches? In this video, we will explore all these questions and more. So let's start exploring the anatomy of Edgar the Bug. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. What alien species does Edgar belong to? The grotesque, disgusting, and dangerous villain from the first Men in Black movie was simply called the Bug, but the creature's official or scientific name is Orthopterus exomorph. This belligerent insectoid race hails from a planet only known as Hive World. Clearly, the name is probably a colloquial term for the planet and may not be the real name. Nevertheless, a bug named Edgar the Bug comes to Earth in the first movie with the intent of inciting a war with the Arquillian galaxy. And that becomes the basic plot of the original film, a true classic. Interestingly, these bugs share some sort of kinship and bond with the insects of Earth, and this love affair reaches a whole other level when it comes to cockroaches. We'll get into this one in a bit of time, but for now, let's dissect the Orthopterus exomorph as a species. The alien species basically resembles a cockroach that probably drowned in a pool of steroids and woke up the next day all bulked up, enlarged, and crazy. Naturally, the anthropod-like species have a hairy and slimy exoskeleton skeleton, four prehensile talon-like claws, two additional limbs, and a tail that's tipped in an extremely deadly stinger. Furthermore, their mouth is more of a fanged maw and comes hideously adorned with a set of mandibles that resemble sharp pincers. Lastly, the heads are crowned with a couple of long antennae because why not? <laughs> I mean, it would make a pretty stupid alien bug if it didn't have antennae, right? Or so the special effects people must have thought. Are they born as gargantuan cockroaches? In the non-canon comic, Men in Black Retribution, which is also the sequel to the original film, we are introduced to the larval form of the bugs. These newborn, but not so little bugs, have an intimidating appearance, resembling multi-legged grubs with a set of round compound eyes, mandibles, and a circular mouth that's lined with six razor-sharp tusks for defense and offense. Surprisingly, despite their tender age, these bug larvae surpass the adult bugs in size and pose a significant threat to anyone who doesn't know how to deal with them. It is revealed that a single bug egg has the remarkable potential to give rise to numerous larvae. Once these creatures grow into adulthood, they exhibit a range of impressive superhuman ability. They develop heightened strength and leaping capabilities and can climb walls with as much ease as a sprinter runs on a track. However, the animated show tells a different story. As revealed in the episode titled The Mine, Mine, Mine Syndrome, bugs typically initiate an invasion when the queen is about to give birth to a new brood. This allows her new offspring to consume the planet's resources and population. The queen possesses the ability to lay numerous eggs at once and requires substantial amounts of sugar during this period. Bug hatchlings resembling mites are relatively small and bear a resemblance to each other in the beginning, but take different forms upon growth. Are all bugs essentially cockroach-like? In the animated series, which diverges from the film continuity, bugs are depicted in various forms and not just cockroach-like. Their home world is referred to as the hive or hive world, with the queen reigning as the supreme ruler and progenitor of the entire bug race. Now, this is similar to most eusocial insect species and even the xenomorphs. In the episode titled The J is for James Syndrome, it is unveiled that all bugs across the galaxy are actually connected to each other through a hive mind that is controlled by the queen. In the event of the queen's death, 
all bugs immediately shut down and cease functioning, which happens in a manner similar to how the Whites fall when their creator, White Walker, is slain. This phenomenon potentially explains the painful reactions experienced by bugs when Earth insects are killed. It seems that the aliens can develop a psychic connection with their earthly counterparts. Additionally, in Universal Studios' Florida's Men in Black alien attack ride, which can be considered canon to the franchise, a colossal bug serves as the final alien encounter for guests. Unlike the bug depicted in the film, this particular bug is actually comparable to a city block. Was that your auntie? Oh, then that must mean that that's your uncle then, huh? How does the true physical form of Edgar look like? Edgar the Bug was played by Vincent D'Onofrio in the original movie, and the character became one of the most vile horror icons from the 90s. As a bug alien, in his true form, it can measure at least 12 feet in height, with a pair of antennae hanging over his head, the traditional six strong limbs of orthopterous exomorphs. You just can't help but feel dread by looking at him, and lord help you if the bug chooses to attack. However, Edgar looks more than a common cockroach, and his appearance extends to other Earth earthly insects as well. His body frame and piercing eyes resemble a praying mantis, one of the coolest insects there is. On the other hand, his mandibles look like the limbs of earthly predator insects. Moving down, one may notice that his hind legs bear resemblance to those of a cricket, but are as efficient in providing agility as the legs of a grasshopper. And of course, Edgar's tail resembles that of a scorpion, and the lethal stinger was probably inspired by a hornet. While disguised as a human farmer named Edgar, the bug, of course, looked different and rather grotesque. I mean, the bug was actually wearing someone's dead, cold, and rotting skin, so over time, the skin costume became saggy and shapeless. Quite interestingly, the Men in Black movie went through several changes before the final product came out. Likewise, the bug's character, appearance, and everything else also went through several changes. For instance, the bug was initially supposed to be an alien, insectoid, religious zealot. It was later changed to a talkative bug alien with a huge inferiority complex who would build an army in the sewers. But these ideas were scrapped and Edgar the Bug was brought to life. The original script had a philosophical argument between Jay and the Bug, but it wasn't an ending that an action comedy needed. Naturally, the ending was axed to give way to an action sequence. Yet, the Bug in his true form had to do the talking, and an expressionless face would have seemed unreasonable, unrealistic, and rather stupid. Imagine a T-Rex talking in one of those Jurassic Park movies. Anyway, so this was when Eric Brevig, visual effects supervisor, suggested using the constant expression of anger over the bug's true face. To achieve this, certain mammalian features were also given to the bug. How do their body and mind affect their lives? As a means of self-defense, the orthopterous exomorph uses a sticky and green phlegm-like substance that's secreted from within their digestive tract. They can shower their victim with this green goo and can swiftly seize objects or immobilize others by ensnaring them in its sticky grip. Additionally, they can compromise the density of their body mass, which allows them to fit into remarkably confined spaces, which would otherwise seem impossible due to their huge size. But perhaps one of the most astonishing aspects of members of this species is their incredible resilience to physical damage. They can thrive even when completely separated from their lower body, as long as their heads remain intact. Now this might be easier to comprehend in the case of less complex organisms like earthworms, but the bugs are nothing like a worm. So, the regenerative ability in these guys is exceptionally well developed, allowing them to withstand cataclysmic events. So, can Edgar the bug be killed? Yes, he can be, but killing him is a difficult task. He has to be obliterated entirely. Despite their near invulnerability and strength, the bugs have a couple of major weaknesses that often lead to their end. First, they're bugs. And as the name shall suggest, they're not the most intelligent of creatures. I mean, yes, they can ride a spaceship and all that, but strategic thinking and logic? Well, that's not really their strongest suit. They have a very limited range of cognitive abilities. Secondly, they share an obsession with the safety of their insects which often leads to situations they don't want to be in. Or as Jamie Lannister would put it, things we do for love. When an earthly insect dies in the vicinity of an orthopterous exomorph, the latter undergoes some form of a somatic response. While it's not painful enough to hurt the bug in any significant way, it does piss the hell out of the bug, making it aggressive, vile, and unpredictable.
What is the true extent of his power? Edgar the Bug, the formidable antagonist of Men in Black, had an array of powers and abilities that made him a real pain in the ass for J and K. Despite his insectoid origins, he exhibited a measurable intellect, or at least when you compare it with insects from Earth. We guess, to them, he is like 20 Einsteins in one body. Of course, his true power was not his intelligence or chivalry, but his superhuman strength, which enabled him to surpass the strength of the fittest of humans. Although his human suit appears to somewhat restrict this power, he was the force of nature's wrath in his true form. Edgar's body exhibits extraordinary flexibility, allowing him to fit awkwardly into the skin and clothing of a much smaller being, a human. A very insect-like capability of Edgar is his wall-crawling skill. Well, much like a grasshopper, Edgar too could propel himself to great heights with remarkable ease. Oh, and he could camouflage, but that's not quite all. While he can considerably alter the sound of his voice, his inhuman origins betray a lingering otherness in his vocalization, creating an eerie effect that adds to his overall menace. So we would say this was more a disability than an ability, but it did its job when it came to intimidating people, especially the wives of men whose skin suits he was wearing. We've already spoken about the green slimy goo he goes around throwing on people to subdue them, so we won't explain that again. However, his innate awareness of nearby insects is what intrigues me. Now, we know that he could sense their pain and emotions, right? But could they really sense his? I mean, yes, they did seem to like him, always swarming around him like insects usually do. But does it also mean that, given enough time, Edgar could have maybe controlled them? Imagine what billions of mosquitoes and ants would do to humans and all other animals for that matter, if they someday chose to unite and take orders. The world would be theirs and we'd be exterminated like insects, in a manner of speaking. How was Edgar in terms of his personality? To sum it up, Edgar was supposed to be a bug with an inferiority complex, but was later turned into the one who lived in an overwhelming superiority complex. I mean, this dude would refer to humans as underdeveloped pond scum and whatnot. The bugs truly believed that they were a highly advanced race of individuals. Yes, the hive did conquer worlds and devour the denizens of entire planets, but genocide doesn't make you superior, does it? Interestingly though, Edgar the bug was far kinder to Edgar's wife wife Beatrice than the original Edgar himself. I guess aliens are curious creatures. Marvelous verdict. You see, the bug's modus operandi of living inside the victim might seem purely fictional, but there are thousands of species that do this on a daily basis. Parasitoid wasps often lay their eggs inside living arthropods or caterpillars. Sometimes the host is left paralyzed, and at other times they're allowed to move around and live their life until the egg hatches and starts eating the host inside out. That's the beauty of most sci-fi movies and their numerous monsters. They always have a connection to the real world. Could you think of any other such examples? We'll wait in the comments. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!